everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Yusu Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is a crepe fabric. Super lightweight, super drapey and perfect for a little top like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my back piece. I have two layers of that fabric underneath this pattern piece. A little notch just to indicate the underarm point and another at the center back near the neck to indicate the neck opening. So that's my two layers of that fabric. So now to join those two layers at the center back seam. So just laying one over the other right sides together and pinning from the hem up to that notch you just see me snip and ready to sew. So stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, the whole way up until I reach that notch and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So I just need to clean up this seam. So on this top I've decided to fell the seam. So in preparation for that I'm just pressing that seam open the whole way up including the neck And now I'm ready to tuck those raw edges in underneath. Bobbing a pin in just to hold it in place. And this is just going to give me a really nice and neat and tidy centre back seam with a little bit of interest on the outside which you'll see later on. So just doing that one more time tucking those edges in underneath, popping in a pin and pressing into place. So I'll finish that off camera, so you can see I've went ahead and done that here, and ready to stitch. So I'm stitching here right along that crease edge. I'm using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching at the start, trying to stick to that crease edge the whole way along. it nice and easy and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks and off camera I'll just finish the other side in exactly the same way and this is how it looks from the inside and from the out. Super neat and tidy, I love this finish. So now for the back neckline, I've decided to use a bias finish. So I've just cut myself about an inch wide strip. I've pressed in one edge and I'm just lining that pressed edge up with the edge of my slit and pinning. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. So now I just need to trim that edge. So I'm taking off probably about two thirds of that seam allowance on both sides. And now I want to understitch this bias just to help it lie nice and flat. So in preparation for that, I'm just pressing the bias away from the bodice, but making sure that the seam allowance that I've just trimmed is butted up against the bias underneath. So you can see that here. And now stitching directly through the bias and that seam allowance in underneath. Using that little bit of a longer stitch length again. Back stitching at the start and the end. And that's how that looks. And now to finish the bias, I just need to tuck that raw edge in underneath. So you can see I've done it on one side. So I'm just pressing the bias towards the bodice this time, giving myself a nice crease line along the neck. And then just in exactly the same way as I did the center back seam, I'm just tucking that raw edge in underneath, pinning in place, and giving myself a little bit of a crease line there. So I finished that off camera, and now ready to stitch. So back stitching at the start, using that same longer stitch length and this time I'm sewing 
as close to that crease edge as I can and back stitching at the end and that's how that looks. So I've got two lines of stitching in underneath and one on top. Again, I really love this finish for these types of tops. So off camera, I've just trimmed the edges of that bias down and I am just going to set my back bodice aside to work on the front. So I have one layer of that crepe fabric on the bias underneath this pattern piece. I have a little notch at the underarm point on both sides. So that's my front all cut out and ready to go. So the first thing I want to do is finish the edge on the facing. So for this facing I've chosen to do a rolled hem and in preparation for that I'm just pressing by about half of my seam allowance that top edge. So just giving myself a crease line there and now I'm going to run a stitch line as close to that crease edge as I can get. Back stitching at the start. Back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks. And now to finish the rolled hem, I just need to trim off that excess seam allowance. I'm being really careful here that I'm not cutting into the facing, that I'm just taking off that seam allowance. So that's how that looks. And I'll finish the rest off camera. So that's it all done. So to finish the rolled hem, I just need to press one more time give myself a nice crease edge and make sure that all of those raw edges are nicely tucked away and ready to stitch. So stitching here using that same longer stitch length as I used on the back, back stitching at the start, trying to stick to that crease edge the whole way along and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks nice and neat. So off camera I've given that a bit of a press and now I'm ready for my shoulder seams. So I'm just laying my back over my front wrong sides together this time. And pinning those shoulder seams and ready to stitch. And I'm French seaming here, so I'm stitching at about half of my seam allowance. Back stitching at the start, and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So I just need to trim off that excess seam allowance. But just before I do that, I want to just snip into that neck shoulder point. And what this will do is just release that little bit of facing so I can finish off that edge. So while I'm here, I'll just trim back that seam allowance, just the same as before, taking off probably about two thirds here. And now that that's done, I'm ready to finish off the edge of the facing. So just like the top edge, I've just folded that fabric, pressed it, folded again, pressed and pinned, and ready to stitch. So stitching just along that crease edge, using that same longer stitch length again, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's that edge all nice and clean and tidy. So now that that's done, I can finish off my shoulder seams. So to do that, I just need to press that seam open and then give myself a nice crease edge right along that seam line. So you can see I've got that here and ready to stitch. So same thing again here, stitching at about half of my seam allowance, back stitching at the start, and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So now that my shoulder seams are complete and that little edge of my facing is complete, I'm ready to attach those together. So you can see I've done it already on one side. So I'm just taking that little pointed edge of the facing, placing it on top of that shoulder seam, just along the seam allowance and pinning, and ready to stitch. 
the back stitching at the start. And as I say, just sewing into the seam allowance here. And back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks from the inside and from the out. Super neat and tidy. So that's my neckline on both front and back complete. My shoulder seams all nicely French seamed. So now I'm ready to close up my underarm seam. So I'm going to use exactly the same finish here as I did on the edge of the facing. So I'm going to roll these hems. So off camera I've just pressed by about half of my seam allowance. And here I'm just running a stitch line as close to that crease edge as I can get. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length here again. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera I've just trimmed off that seam allowance, giving myself a nice crease line and nice stitching just along that inner edge this time. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera I've given those a little bit of a press. And now before I can sew up my side seams I just need to release that little bit of fabric at the underarm point. So I'm just snipping just where my original notch was. And you can see that will just release that fabric in readiness for sewing up my side seams. So to sew up those side seams, I'm just laying my back over my front wrong sides together and pinning. I'm going to sew these seams in exactly the same way as I did the shoulder. So French seaming here. So back stitching at the start, at about half of my seam allowance and back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks. And off camera I'll just trim off that excess seam allowance. So you can see I've done it here. I've given myself a nice crease edge along that seam line. And now stitching for the second time again at about half of my seam allowance, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. So off camera I've given those side seams a bit of a press and this is how they look. And I only have a couple more things to do to finish this little top. One is to finish the hem. And again I'm using exactly the same finish here as I did on both the facing and the arms. So I've just pressed up by about half of my hem allowance. I'm stitching here right along the crease edge as close as I can get to it. Back stitching at the start and the end off camera I'll trim off any excess seam allowance I have, fold and press and stitching here this time along the inner crease edge, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So the very last thing I have to do is just pop on some sort of a closure and for this top I've decided on a little standard button and a thread loop, both sewn on the inside. And with that this little top is complete. So I have that gorgeous coil with those edges all nicely tucked away, same thing around the underarms and the hem. And then on the back I've got that lovely bit of interest right up the centre back seam that nice button and loop closure and this is what it looks like on. So I could not be happier with how this has turned out. I like how the coil is really gentle. It's such a comfortable fit. I think this pattern made up in a silk would be absolutely gorgeous and one that I am definitely going to do. I love this one. 
So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks.